it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I guess it is morning for you uh, with all of you uh, today. And uh, I'll move into the presentation. The, the, um, let's get it up on the screen sharing. I talk about I, IT um, lifecycle management when you're budgeting for IT because uh, I've seen often, uh, not just in uh, the developing projects I'm working in around the world, but also in our own tax agency in Canada, um, often people think about the capital cost of the initial investment um, for a new business IT solution, but they don't, um, they don't understand that there's ongoing operational costs to sustain that solution as well. And they have to be budgeted for and planned for, uh, or you're going to build something that you can't sustain for the long term or will have um, improper weak maintenance that it won't deliver the business value that was fully expected. When you're you know, in government, aside from buying new buildings, uh, and if you leave out the military, of course, tanks and airplanes and things like that, ICT projects are the largest capital expenditures that departments make. And all these effectively touch the Ministry of Finance at some point for a funding decision, a funding approval, uh, or, or identification of where funds will come from. And, and you know, the reason that it's of interest is because uh, you need proper capital expenditure management. It's a multi-year planning to do a major IT investment. You also have to think about procurement in a multi-year perspective because uh, it's not a one-time thing. These projects generally take more than one year. And then with infrastructure in place, this infrastructure all has a life cycle. There need to be supply arrangements in place for multiple years to sustain the infrastructure, add additional capacity, and evergreen the environment so that it continues to work. And that speaks to the asset sustainability. Also, when making these large investments, people want budget transparency. They want to understand why are we in investing millions of dollars um, in this new business solution, in this new IT infrastructure, uh, and, and that needs to be visible and brought forward. And that's generally done through uh, a business case for the investment. And we'll talk a bit about that uh, later in the presentation. <clears throat> but, you know, IT investments need to be grounded in a business case that ties back to what the business of the department um, making the investment is about. There are no IT projects. They're all business projects to uh, solve a business need, um, um, solve a business problem, in some way bring value to citizens and taxpayers uh, through improved service delivery, improved performance in government. And lastly, Again, the issue that's often overlooked is making sure that there's operational funding uh, to sustain the IT infrastructure and the maintenance of the IT applications, and also to continue to evolve the application because no IT project gets it right the first time when it's implemented over its 12 to 24 month uh, um, development window. There's always things that were missed, things that weren't quite gotten correctly in the specification, or new good ideas that have to be worked into the solution uh, after it's been implemented into production. I, I give an example in the presentation of the, you know, the typical planning framework, planning cycle. I use a, a revenue authority. I have obviously 35 years experience working in the revenue authority, but you could substitute any other government ministry Whatever, whatever its mandate is, where you have to have, you know, IT investments have to be linked back into the business strategies of the organization. So if you're going to invest in a large new um, tax collection solution for multi-millions of dollars, somewhere you should be able to find a business strategy from collections that explains the value of this and how it's going to improve uh, tax revenues for the organization, et cetera. Um, it's it, uh, again the example I give you is tax, but you could change the headings to whatever kind of department you're in. And then within that, there's a roadmap for IT. It needs to have a longer-term IT investment plan, at least a three-year view, always looking ahead three years. What are we going to need to refresh in the way of infrastructure that is now past end of life? Uh, what new functionality are businesses demanding that are going to create new? Um, 
uh, application development projects. And a, se a separate topic, which we're not getting into today, is there should, within your IT organizations, be an IT capacity development plan. How is the government or this department going to get better at delivering IT solutions, meaning faster, less expensive, better quality? That too is, a, is something that a large IT organization should have in place. And then that flows into your annual business plan and your operations of the organization. So when you're looking to invest in IT, you know, people get funding in one very large glump at the beginning of a project to say, we're going to do this wonderful new IT project. It needs $30 million of investment. We found the money in the budget, or we have a donor who's willing to lend us the money. So let's go forward and do this. And that's to cover the initial one-time investment cost, which is your hardware cost. Um, but don't forget that hardware, if you buy it this year in 2027, you're going to have to replace it. Generally, most hardware has a five-year life cycle, at which point it's at end of life as recommended by the manufacturer, and it needs to be replaced. So your submission to Ministry of Finance will cover the cost of this hardware, but it never ever covers the cost of ongoing evergreening of the hardware to replace it in five years and then again in 10 years. So this is something, you know, ministries of finance need to make sure departments are aware of this issue and that they have plans on how they're going to address this issue. Software is more straightforward. It's the initial cost of the software is the capital investment on a large submission for IT development, as is the application development cost, whether it's a consultancy to come in and build, or products that are going to be configured and, and um, customized to meet your business needs. Then on the ongoing operating cost side, which is not part of the submission for capital investments for a new ICT solution, you have the annual maintenance cost for hardware, which is usually about 20% of the actual capital cost of the hardware to keep the vendor uh, available for patches and upgrades and to have remote support or, or in-person support uh, in, in times of crisis. Similarly, software has costs that run to roughly 20% of the purchase price. Vendors actually make their money on the maintenance costs, not on the capital investment costs. When they sell you hardware or software, it's almost like it's a lost leader. Their profit comes more from maintenance costs, the ongoing recurring annual cost you're gonna pay forever uh, as long as you keep using that infrastructure or solution. And then applications themselves, once they're implemented into production and come out of the, you know, that window of development time that was covered by the initial capital budget for the project, they too have operating costs and costs to resolve incidents and problems and to do annual conversion of the application if it's tied to a, a legislative life cycle such as taxation. And then there are always requests for legislative change, functionality, improvement, et cetera. These costs too uh, have, to be, have to be borne by the department that owns the solution. Uh, so again, you know, that can range from 5% up to 25%, depending on the amount of agility, the, you know, the pace of change that the owners want in that application. So again, um, if you, if you keep adding um, new IT solutions and infrastructure to a department and don't address the ongoing recurring annual budget of that department to cover all of these costs, eventually um, things begin to rust out. You don't have staff or contracts in place for maintenance and uh, applications either cease to work or are no longer achieving what they were intended for when, when the business case was approved to actually make this significant IT investment. So I just encourage from a Ministry of Finance perspective, you can't just ask how much is this IT solution going to cost? We'll find the money and we'll do it. You have to ask, and then how are we going to sustain this new solution or this new infrastructure? Where is the money supposed to come from for that? Because the department that is receiving the benefit of the capital investment doesn't have the operating budget to sustain that capital investment unless the Ministry of Finance increases its operating budget, or in the case of Canada Revenue, instead of what we were basically told to do is find the money within your own operating budget through the efficiencies you've gained 
from this new IT solution or elsewhere, meaning less collectors, less auditors, whatever you had to do to pull budget resources to cover the ongoing operating costs, maintenance costs uh, uh, for the, the hardware, software, and the actual application itself. It's, my experience has been in, in most countries I go into that these costs have not been addressed. And it's sad to go in and see something that was implemented 10 years ago uh, and find that the, the servers and the software are all past their end of life. It's impossible now to upgrade the application because they've allowed too many uh, versions to pass, too many upgrades to pass without, without following the vendor's upgrade path. And they effectively have to replace the entire solution, the entire capital investment is now lost and you're basically starting over again with a new solution. It's a recurring theme I see, I've seen in many countries and it's because the, these ongoing operating costs aren't being addressed when projects are funded and departments are being left on their own and their only response is do nothing. They have no money, they have no budget, they can't sustain the uh, IT investment that was made. The next, uh, this slide um, speaks is probably in too much detail for our discussion here, but it, it's just to reemphasize the point, IT investment planning is a multi-year program. You, you, you know, generally um, a central IT organization in government or an IT organization in a large department has a central budget and procurement plan for all of its IT assets. And that plan has to be updated every year. And it's updated based on the recurring hardware and software costs, your sustainability investments, and any, any kind of infrastructure improvements you want to make. But all that plan then has to go over to procurement and supply because you need an equally three-year view or more of your supply cycle to say, well, do we have contracts in place to be able to replace those servers in two years? Um, do we have contract in place to upgrade the software we need to upgrade? Do we have supply in place for application support consultants to come in and, and do some of this, uh, this maintenance that's needed? So you, you have the operation ongoing running and that then you're looking at what do we need to do to sustain all this IT infrastructure and these applications. And then we work with procurement to say, do we have, because you know, in, in my case, it took 18 months minimum to do a large tender for infrastructure, hardware, or software. I and mean, it's not a fast process. So that's why you need the three-year plan, the three-year cycle on procurement tied back to your sustainability plans and your development plans to make sure supply is always in place. So I, I leave it there as just an example of good practices on how to, you know, the questions to ask when you're talking to the CIO of a large IT organization and government, have you thought of this? Have you addressed this? Have you looked after the procurement supply issues that are going to be uh, going to be hounding us for years to come uh, to sustain this infrastructure? I, I find bizarre practices in some countries. You know, when I'm when I'm coaching people on how to do a, a major IT investment for a new tax solution, say, which is a you know a ten to an eighty million dollar application investment with infrastructure. Um, you know, the advice is always go for two years of maintenance if you can in the contract with the vendors and try and have options for at least five additional years of maintenance because the firm that built it is the firm that knows it and can give you the best maintenance. And in some countries, it's just not allowed. That's against the law. There's a practice of changing suppliers every two years um, because it keeps corruption down is the theory. I, it's, I don't think that works, but I have seen it practiced in several countries. And again, I encourage, think about ways to make a long-term partnership when tendering for a, a, a complex application. Um, and, and in doing so, it's included in the budgeting uh, that is done, supported by the Ministry of Finance. Um, the, the ministry isn't just approving the large capital investment, it's also approving and recognizing, oh, and for five years, we'll have these maintenance costs and people will know at the, be you know, at the time the decision is made to fund the project, where are the ongoing maintenance costs coming from? From an investment planning perspective, uh, I won't go through this chart, but it's just to give you an example. It's from one country I worked in uh, a couple of years ago. You know, we worked for 
I think a year and a half um, looking at all of their infrastructure and all of their applications and talking with all of the business lines on what do you need uh, in the way of new functionality, what do you need in the way of investment. And you come and, you know, this boils down to a chart like this that lists the, the sustainability needs for infrastructure, for applications, and it lists the new functionality needs in the way of what new applications do we need or enhancements to applications we need. It puts a price on them all and it ranks them all as to whether they're high, medium, or low priority. In reality, on this chart, there's only high priority. Medium and lows get scraped off before this is finalized and presented to the Ministry of Finance. Um, and, and it asks hard questions about, well, if I gave you the money, where are you getting the resources to do this work? Because approving a project to a department that does not have the capacity to execute isn't very effective at delivering the business value that you're expecting uh, from this major investment. So I, I leave it with you behind it. You know, it was more of a, rigor, a rigorous process on how do we assess sustainability gaps and then how do we talk with each business line to say, what do you need and what's the value? If we give you what you need, what do you give back? And again, in, in my organization, Canada Revenue, um, our chief financial officer was very good at booking projected savings from business lines on whenever a new IT investment was made to say, yes, we'll give you $30 million over two years to build that new workflow solution for this or that function. But in your business case, you said it would save you 40 person years. Therefore, at the end of two years, when the solution is implemented, we're reducing your operating budget by 40 person years of salary and transferring that to the investment fund to help to pay back this capital investment we've made. That was our operating principle in the uh, in Canada Revenue, which worked as an independent revenue authority, it wasn't governed as strictly by the Treasury uh, or the Ministry of Finance. It had its own capital investment fund. For roles, you know, if, when you're talking to a CIO uh, from a large department, I mean, you know, they should know the uh, currency of their inventory of IT assets um, in the way of hardware and software that they're current and sustainable. Uh, as similarly for applications, what applications are at risk of failing because they're the, you know, the products they were built with are no longer supported or are they sustainable to the future? And a good CIO knows the business of the department it's working for to understand uh, you know, what motivates each business line, what, what are its needs and drivers, and they work with them to develop business cases for capital investment in IT. It's, it's not IT coming forward with a business case for investment. In our example, it was always the business line coming forward for the IT investment. So audit or collections or taxpayer service, they were the ones speaking to the CFO or to the Ministry of Finance saying, we need this many million for this investment. The, the CIO went with them, but it was the business line that owned the submission in the process. And lastly, again, the CIO role is to ensure all costs are identified, not just development costs, but they have a plan on how we're going to address the ongoing costs. Chief financial officers, they base, you know, they control the annual budget process in a department, obviously, uh, but they also play a, a, a significant role, in, in our case they did, on quality control over ICT business case development to ensure that the business case was legitimate, that it was evidence-based, there were facts there, and promises made that could be um, called upon, collected upon at the end of the project to help uh, re re repay the cost of investment over time. They also played a role uh, in the oversight of major IT investment projects. There was a steering committee that all major projects went to on a quarterly basis, chaired by the chief financial officer, not by the CIO. Uh, to ask the questions of, are we on time? Are we on budget? What are the issues that are threatening the success of this project? And again, they were very interested to make sure that we understood where the costs were coming from for uh, at the end of this project to cover operations. And uh, because they'd had the experience in the past where they were not addressed. And then years later, there's a crisis and the CFO has to reach into the coffers of the department to cover an unplanned cost. 
And lastly is to book the savings from the project um, to, to ensure that the business case wasn't just used to sell the project, but people lived up to what the business case said. And if there were projected savings, they paid them, they, they gave up the savings. Treasury or the chancellery as it's called in some countries basically are limited to setting IT, ICT policy and giving oversight to departments complying with that policy. They played a challenge role in, uh, in business case approval and development. And they champion in many countries the shared service initiatives that you're seeing where countries are going to a shared infrastructure service across all departments from one uh, IT organization. And lastly, they have a role to play on performance evaluation on IT project execution. And lastly, Ministry of Finance, um, you know, largely, you obviously you're, you're, you're in full control of the budget process. You're the approval authority for advancing funds for a business case that, uh, that uh, justifies the capital investment. And you're, you're also the conduit for additional funds to come in outside of budget funds should that the government wish to work with a donor uh, to support some uh, uh, investment in ICT infrastructure or new applications or both. And this is the last slide I'll speak to as the presentation. And it's a summary of what a proper business case for ICT investment should include. Obviously it should have an executive summary that a non-IT person can understand even a non you know, business person in that line of the department can understand that explains what the value of this investment is in regarding improved service, increased revenues, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, it should explain what happens if we don't invest. What's the cost of not investing? Uh, it should explain that we've looked at various options on how to solve this business problem, how to, how to get the benefit and give, you know, the cost savings decision-making criteria criteria that led us to choose this alternative, this option. In our case, we also had a, an accuracy of assessment um, requirement uh, on any business case submission, project submission. Are your estimates plus or minus 50%, plus or minus 20%, plus or minus 5%? When you get just about to project execution, they have to be plus or minus 5%. Um, explanation on how this ICT investment aligns to the corporate business business plan or other government strategies or departmental strategies. Uh, a business case should come with an initial project plan that gives the scope statement for the project, planning assumptions and whatnot, and explains what deliverables will come at what phase in the project and the duration of those phases and any cost savings that, uh, that are being projected should be included in the project plan. There should be an explanation of the roles, responsibilities and dependencies for the project. Um, these are key risk factors for a project. If it's dependent on other organizations, external factors, they need to be highlighted here. Uh, uh, the business case should include an evaluation framework so that we can tell if we're making progress. You know, what key deliverables at each phase say that we're making progress, we're succeeding, uh, to give us some kind of performance measurement factors. And lastly, a risk assessment uh, of not only identifying the risk, but explaining how we're going to mitigate those that might threaten the success of the project or contingency plans for major risks. And I think on that note, I'll, there's some appendix slides there for your information and benefit on some strategies on contract management for, uh, for maintenance, but I'll end the present there, presentation there and turn it over for any questions.